What is up everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did in the markets today, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade as we're getting closer into the middle of this month here in October in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, I'm also going to be giving you my thoughts and my my opinion on whether or not we're seeing any stock market manipulation right now. Believe it or not, I've been getting this question a lot in my personal DM, either on Instagram, Twitter, or Discord. So I figured why not make a video on it, talk about it. So if you do want to see my opinion on that, stick in this video in a couple of minutes, I'll go over it. So if you enjoy this video, if you find any value in this video, all I ask is you go down below, smash that like button, and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market both trading and investing and as always our free discord group chat and our free facebook group those are linked down below as well as my personal instagram so without further ado let's get into it guys starting off with the spx we have some interesting things to talk about today so the s p was up 18 dollars and 73 cents at the close today up 0.6 Four percent, And we all know that we had some big, big, big negotiations today between the U.S. and China, right? And we got a tweet this morning, which kind of ties into the title, Is the Stock Market Being Manipulated? from our president, from the U.S. President, Donald Trump. And let me read you this tweet, guys. Big day of negotiations with China. They want to make a deal, but do I? I meet with the vice president tomorrow at, or rather the vice premier tomorrow at the White House. So he's pretty much saying that he wants to come to a deal, right? Or China wants to come to a deal, but does he, does President Trump want to come to a deal? So this was kind of good news in terms of optimism into the stock market. And what happened, guys, this morning? If we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see that this was a bit of manipulation, right? Again, this kind of ties to the title of this video. This tweet was sent out at 9.49 a.m. And if you guys look here... Right around that 9.49 a.m., you guys can see it, the market skyrocketed, right? We opened up at 29.20, then all of a sudden we skyrocketed all the way up to 29.50 within an hour and 45 minutes. And from there, we were kind of flat and kind of descending for the rest of the day, but we still ended up closing up again 18 points from the close of the market yesterday. So nonetheless, we saw a bit of manipulation this morning. We got that tweet, and I feel like Trump has been doing this in the past where he goes on Twitter, he tweets, you know, trade negotiations are going well, a deal is coming soon, all this optimism just to pump up the market because he knows that the stock market hates uncertainty. What do you hate? What do I hate? Uncertainty, right? That's what people hate and that drives the market down when there are these worries surrounding trade, right? So if we go back to this 20-day chart or actually we didn't go to it in the first place so if we look at it now for the first time you guys can see we still technically closed on a downswing here right lower high from the previous we're still trending below that 180 sma so this is actually a positive sign for these bears out here right these bears their hopes are still alive because they're not really the candles aren't breaking out here they're not breaking above moving averages which would be very good for the bulls but again they're trending down here with hopes alive of still reaching that lower low, which would obviously constitute the continuation of this downtrend here. So if we go out to the 184 hour very quickly to look at some levels to watch out for, this is a prominent level right now, 29.20, 29.15. This is a level to watch as a support. Resistance right now, 29.50, right? We can see, again, if we go back to that one day, one minute, we got rejected there at about 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard, which is, again, a good sign for these bears because if we zoom back out, that is a resistance, right? So if we end up breaking 29.20, we may be going back down to test 28.80. This is a level of watch. Another one is 2850 and so forth is 2810 is the next one and so on right 2737 here so that if that ended up happening guys if trade 
started to get rocky, which I think it could. We'll go over some specs here on my phone in a couple of minutes about the trade, what happened today, which is a good sign. But let's say this doesn't end up happening. Let's say things get rocky. We could end up going down, and that would complete this right shoulder that we've been talking about in this overall head and shoulders pattern that I'm seeing here on the S&P 500, right? So if we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys, up 150 points, up 0.57%. We closed under a key level of resistance, which is $26,600, right? We're trending below that and above the level of support at around 26,200. And if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see same thing with the S&P. The second Trump tweeted that the second the markets rocked up like crazy, right? The markets were like a rocket here from 26.3. We went all the way up to that 26.6 level of resistance that we talked about on the four hour chart. And from there, we ended up closing on a downswing, which if we go to the 20 day one hour, you guys can see lower high from the previous and under that 180 SMA as well as that 26.6 level of resistance. So in this at this point in time guys, um I think the bulls are still in charge. Although if you look at the futures here, we're actually spiking up after hours on the one day one minute you guys can see. So this could end up changing the trend um if this carries on into tomorrow um because Trump is speaking tomorrow and again he's meeting with the vice premier which could end up causing either optimism or a lot of pessimism in the market which obviously we have to wait and see what that does but the fact that the futures are up now that it's a that's a decent sign for these bulls but overall at the close of the market again like we saw this is still looking like the bears are in charge in my personal opinion right so those are just some levels on the dow to watch out for if we get lower here of course 25 6 is one again we talked about 25 9 um, 25 3 these are all levels that if we break all of these that would be the completion of the overall head and shoulder pattern that I'm seeing here on the Dow Jones, right? So the NASDAQ today had a very good day, right? Up 1.16%, up 90 points. And I think this does include the little run up that we've seen after market hours. But anyway, it was up around 1%, right? Let's just say it was up around 1%. 0.16 is what we've been seeing in the after market hour spike here. But overall, to be honest, this is looking a bit bullish in my eyes. And let me explain to you guys why. Take a look at this trend line that I just drew out. You can see we're making higher lows on the NASDAQ in this time period right here of a couple of months. We made higher highs for a good amount of time here. We had an overall pullback that lasted about a month. Up until now, we're finally breaking out again. We're breaking out. Well, we already did break out of that 50 SMA. And and now we're starting to break out of this 180 SMA and we're looking to go up and test 7830, which is a prominent level of resistance right now. So the fact that we are breaking these moving averages, guys, this is looking very bullish. And especially if we start to break into the 7800 range again, that is going to be interesting, right? You know, if if tech does well obviously let's say they do come into a trade deal miraculously in the next couple of weeks this can send this market flying right that's the one thing if they do come to a trade agreement the market could go flying and obviously, 90% of you guys already know that. And if we look on the one hour on the NQ, you can see it even more, right? Higher low breakout above moving averages, looking to test 78.30. This is looking bullish in my opinion, while the S&P and the Dow didn't look so bullish, right? So that is the overall market update in terms of the three major indexes. Let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts about that? And let's quickly go over my thoughts on whether or not the stock market is manipulated in terms of, you know, media and President Trump tweeting things and really trying to pump optimism to the stock market, right? I'm not really focusing on if funds are being funneled and pumping into the market. A lot of you guys would argue that that is happening. 
And um, honestly, I'm just focusing on whether or not Trump here is pumping up the market. And I think he is, right? We saw in the beginning of this video how the SPX, and we've seen this again, like I mentioned multiple times, the S&P skyrocketed on one tweet, right? Trump literally has the stock market at this point in his hands on Twitter. He can tweet anything. If he tweets something negative, like we've seen in the past, tariffs are being slapped, right? We're putting 15, 20, 25% on these Chinese goods. We've seen the market plunge because of that. So at, at this point, I really think that he can definitely, and the media in general, could definitely manipulate this market to go into the upwards direction, especially with pumping optimism as we've been seeing over these past couple of days around trade. Because like I mentioned earlier in this video, trade is the number one uncertainty right now in the global economy. And of course, in the stock market that's weighing on investors and traders. So long story short, guys, I do think the stock market's manipulated. Um, you know, to an extent, I definitely think it is manipulated. And one more thing to mention here before we do go into the trading update of today's video, some positive things that could have also been a catalyst to the market today, right? The uh, Myron Brilliant, the executive vice president and head of international affairs at the Chamber of Commerce, told reporters on Thursday that he was hopeful that a limited arrangement stopping a planned tariff increase on October 15th would emerge from this week week's meetings. A limited deal would include the concessions that China has made to the United States, including an agreement on currency, the report said. The White House could also contemplate removing the threat of additional tariffs that are slated to be imposed in December or scale back some of the tariffs it has already le le levied on more than $360 billion of Chinese goods. So this is a good sign. If we start to see some tariffs being pulled away, way that is a legit you know this is not just trump pumping optimism to the market if, if we're seeing tariffs being pulled away that's actually a legit reason for the markets to go up so i figured i'd throw that in this video let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section and let's talk about what i did today in the market so if you guys watched yesterday's video it was a video on you guys and how i think right now natural gas in the short term as production and supply is increasing right now with all these injections I think in the short term, natural gas has more downside. And today, you guys saw how natural gas was falling and went all the way down to that 220 level that we talked about in yesterday's video, right? This ended up playing out beautifully. And let me show you guys, and you guys know at this point, Whenever natural gas is going down, degas is going up. So let me show you guys the one day, one minute on NG. You can see pretty much ever since this morning, we were straight up downtrending after some consolidation here in the first couple of hours of the market today. Well, actually, most of pre-market and into the market open today. And then we ended up seeing that dump. And this is actually where I took advantage of degas, which again, guys, I called this out in yesterday's video. I said... When natural gas was at 225 yesterday, there's a lot of downwards pressure because of everything going on with the inventory in terms of natural gas. And when you have this data, when you have this thesis in your head and you execute on it, that is how it kind of works at the end of the day, right? That's exactly what I ended up doing. So I started to see the big dump today, especially after the report at 1030 a.m. And that triggered me getting into a position in D gas. That's just how it went. Honestly, guys, once, you know, 1030 hit I saw this massive bull run um, you know bullish move rather in D gas break above moving averages pull down hold on moving averages as support this is where I ended up getting in at around 150 I think it was like hundred and fifty dollars and 24 cents then I ended up riding it for about an hour a little bit less than an hour I think it was up to about hundred and fifty three dollars roughly and if you guys look on a percentage basis that's a pretty good trade there of about 1.6 I think it was like 1.6 1.6 0.7% on D gas. So honestly, guys, that was good. And this is the awesome thing about these inverse ETFs, because my thesis again is that natural gas is going to have short term downside. So I can play D gas again, which goes up when natural gas goes up. But ultimately, in two, three weeks, I think 
natural gas is going to start to climb back up, right? I think UGAS is going to be a play heading into the month of November, which I'll just flip to that when I want to ride the bull run on natural gas. And that's the awesome thing about these, um, you know, inverse ETFs. And going back to natural gas, might as well break down, you know, the stocks and ETFs that I'm watching now. You guys can see 220 here is that level of support that I'm watching. But if we break that that could be a massive drop down in the 210 to around 212 range, which is this support level that we were hovering around during the July to August months of 2019, right? This is the next zone that we'll get down to. But if we do get down to here, guys, that's going to be a very extremely oversold natural gas. And that could even open up a lot more window on you guys. For those of you guys that are very, very sure, for those of you guys that are um, uh, convinced that there is going to be a natural gas bull run here in the next couple of, excuse me, weeks. So 212, 205 is another one. I don't know if we'll get down there at this point, but hey, anything is possible. These are just levels to watch, and I always recommend drawing out lines, supports, resistances. So you, it helps you guys at the end of the day. It helps you with price action, understanding where stocks, ETFs, futures could potentially go. And at the end of the day, that's the whole purpose of Think or Swim, right? And if you guys, by the way, want to see a Think or Swim tutorial, there's one linked down below in the description. It's around 20, 25 minutes, but you'll get the basic understanding of how to use this platform um, to really execute your trades and do well in the market, indicators, all stuff like that. So overall, that's what I'm watching in terms of natural gas, what I did today in terms of trading. Let's talk about gold here very quickly, guys, slash GC. Gold is still looking a bit bearish at this point, right? This is looking like it wants to make the run down to 1465. And at this point, Let's say trade talks go well tomorrow. We're going to see Trump speak. We all know there's going to be something said. We're going to get some news. Let's say this is positive news. Stock market rises again. This is not going to be good for gold because typically gold moves inversely to the stock market. You guys saw the market do very well today. Well, gold did not do very well. It was down 14 points, down almost 1%. We got rejected by that 180 SMA. We broke that 50 SMA here on the four-hour chart. Now, now we're looking to test 1495, which is actually the first level of support, not 1465. My fault there, guys. But if we break 1495, we will be going straight down to 1465, maybe do something like this. And guys, what is that pattern? I'm thinking that's a head and shoulder, right? That is kind of a weird looking head and shoulder in a way. If we do end up going down to 1460, and especially if we break that, because you can see the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder at this point, um, that could end up happening here on the the the, uh, the hypothetical situation that these markets do go up. Let's say in the flip side, markets dump, we break above moving averages, that's going to be bullish for gold, right? And what do we trade that trades on gold? We trade JDST and JNUG, which are two inverse ETFs. They trade based upon GDX, right? GDX, all it is, it's a gold miners ETF. It trades based upon gold. Whenever GDX is going down, JDST is going up at a 3x rate, which if the market skyrocket here, guys, tomorrow, let's say, for example, JDST is a prime candidate to do well if gold does end up dumping. And if the flip side happens, markets, stock market in general, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, let's say that dumps, gold ends up flying, GDX ends up flying, JNUG is going to be what is worth watching, which at this point, guys... If we're breaking down JNUG, it's looking pretty bearish, which is why we need that massive push in gold to lift this one. At this point, you know, it's still making lower highs. No doubt about it. We made a lower low. It's still downtrending at this point, right? We need to see some severe price action push into the $70 range, into the low 70s, and in my opinion, into the mid-70s um, at this point before I, I would consider buying this, in, in, you know, to be honest. But in the meantime, 
I, I consider, uh, you know, day trading in and out of JDST and JNUG as gold is a bit volatile, right? So some others that are looking good right now, Apple, guys, has been killing it recently, right? We pulled down 50 SMA jump. We hit an all-time high today, I think, three-year, one-week chart. Yep, we hit an all-time high today at 230.44. Apple is looking strong, guys. So at this point, this one could be a potential swing if we pull pull down and retest that moving average 50 SMA on this four hour chart, maybe at a 225 entry, maybe 226 entry. That's kind of what I'm watching here on Apple. If that happens, we get the pullback. And then again, earnings are coming up. So that is a bit risky. That is in 20 days um, from now. So I think we might have time to swing it before then. But if we get the pull down, our side pulls down. This could end up being a decent entry point, I'm thinking. Roku, guys, has caught on fire yet again. Not today. Today it was down about 2 bucks, But yesterday, I don't think I talked about it in the video, but yesterday... It went crazy from 112 all the way up to around 117. If we go back to that 184 hour, guys, at this point, we're overbought. Our size overextended. If we get the pull down retest at 112, which I think is extremely possible, this could be a good entry before if we fill up the gap up to 128, right? Not saying it's going to happen, but let's say we get the pull down support and start to pop up. At that point, hey, it might be a possibility that it does fill the gap up, which could be a very awesome gain of around 12 to 13 percent. So I'm watching Roku, watching Apple, Tesla still at that sticking point at 245, looking for this to fill the gap up to 260. To be honest with you guys, UWT is another one worth watching here. We're playing around with that 50 SMA, holding 850 strong, running up into the tens now. If crude oil continues this little rally that it's seeing right? UWT could do very well. And you guys can see if we stretch this out a bit, this could be a very good play for tomorrow. Honestly, guys, you can see crude oil does have potential to fill up to 54.50, 54.60, which again, if that does fill that up, UWT is going to be doing very, very well. And of course, flip side, we run up, get rejected, start to dump. DWT, which is the inverse to UWT, is what I'm going to be looking to trade. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. Let me know your thoughts on the stock market, whether or not you think the stock market it's being manipulated. I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat, guys. Don't forget to do that. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram. There's going to be a giveaway there in a little bit. I promise you guys will find a ton of value in all of those communities. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.